So today I want to show you how we do some fun type of training in orienteering because I think that in general orienteering is all about having really fun and if you're not having fun while doing it then what's the point right? And fun trainings are one of my favorites and this is the day when we organize as a club a very fun training and I think that first of all it might inspire you to do something similar in your club Second of all, maybe it will be just fun to watch. So stay with me. Let's move to the start position where I will be explaining what the training is all about. Before we continue, I want to take this moment to appreciate you guys. Hopefully you're learning a lot from this channel and your orienteering journey, journey is a lot more fun. If you want to support us, check the links in the description. And now let's talk about what the training is all about. So you see me here explaining the rules of engagement to everyone that attended the training session. And the rules are as follows. First of all, the training is split into two different training sessions, really. So we treated them separately. We scored them separately in terms of time. And even if you wanted to, you could, for example, run one of those uh, parts slower, the other one faster. It was totally up to you, depending on your training plan. Uh, so what was the first one? The first one was, I think, the most interesting. The goal of the session was to complete the course, which was quite easy. We actually had two courses over here. The first one for children and the second one for uh, more advanced runners. Both of them were quite short, so even the longer one was like 3.3 kilometers, not too long. But essentially, it was just supposed to take people all the way to the, to the second part of the forest, where the second type part of the training would take place. But we didn't want to make it just a simple course. We wanted it to make, uh, we wanted it to be fun, therefore, there is, there, there is a very interesting twist to how this uh, first part of the training is conducted. So the twist is that you get the full map at the start, but you're not allowed to run with it. So you might think, okay, it's a memory training. Not really, because what you also get is a blank piece of paper and you can draw whatever you want on that piece of paper to help you complete the course. Now. Even the, 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 the longer course, even though it's not long, so like, as I said, like 3.3, it had nine controls. So if you try to memorize the, the path to all the nine controls, it is going to be quite difficult. I'm not sure if I would be able to um, get it perfectly. And I consider myself to have a pretty good memory in these types of, of training sessions. Therefore, being able to draw something on a piece of paper that will help you find those controls is very helpful, of course but it's also a lot of fun at the same time because you get to think, okay, so what do I want to mark on my piece of paper? What do I want to draw from the map to the blank sheet so that it helps me in my navigation? And uh, even though this training is also a lot of fun, it's actually a very interesting type of a training per se because it shows me as a coach what people are using when they are navigating through the forest. So if I look at those maps that people draw, I see what kind of elements are being drawn over there, which elements they totally skip, which elements they put on the map, what are they going to be navigating by. And I always say that um, it's important to generalize how you're running in orienteering because thanks to this you're able to reach those higher speeds and this training forces you exactly to do that because the time when you're sitting down and drawing the map counts to your time of the leg of, or of the, of the race so the longer you draw the map the longer your time is going to be so you want to be able to draw to draw the map as fast as possible therefore you don't want to put lots of elements on the map you want to put as little as is necessary to complete the whole course so um, the, the, the spread was quite wide some people were completing the the, the, the map they draw uh, by themselves in several minutes some people were spending almost 20 minutes drawing the map so the the, the the, the approach was totally different and that's fine. Everybody was supposed to choose their own way through this. But all in all, I think it's a 
very fun and interesting training session and you can actually learn quite a lot from it. Now the second part of the training, uh, we took a part of the forest map which is in scale 1 to 10,000 and we enlarged it to be 1 to 5,000 and just designed a sprint in this area. So this area uh, you will see that it's quite a dense forest area although this map is already like two or three years old so the forest has grown a little bit and it's not that bad to go through those greener areas it's actually quite runnable you will get a, a little bit of scratches here and there but in, in general it's totally fine so because this area has a lot of details it's actually a pretty good area to use for this type of the training because we have lots of elements to put the controls at and we thought that we uh, we will organize this sprint so that people get a little bit um, a, a little bit of a different type of sprint training because nowadays we mostly run sprints in the cities and forest sprints are not a thing anymore really but I think personally that they tend to be quite a lot of fun and again the type of training is not only about fun because this type of training is again forcing you to behave a little bit differently and some of the things that will be important over here are modulating your speed so you don't want to be going super fast because you want to be on top of your map all the time you want to be reading the details and understanding what you're looking for so that when you're going through this forest you're actually searching for the right kind of feature and on top of this to make this training a little bit more difficult we decided to not put flags on the controls so there were just sticks with SI stations and no flags so the controls were not very visible in the forest and I think it was a brilliant decision because just by trying it out I saw immediately that just because the flag was, was not there some people were missing the control by 5 to 10 meters just passing it by running next to it because they were not searching for a feature they were searching for a control and hoping that just because they go in a proper direction more or less they will see the control well it's not the case because the flags are not there so just the, the poles are not that visible even though they are red and yellow uh, so not that bad really both of those trainings are really educational you don't have to use them both at the same time you can of course make one training during one training during one day second type of the training during a second day we just chose to connect both of those because we wanted it to be a little bit longer but of course they don't have to go together and hopefully this will in inspire you to practice different kinds of training sessions uh, during your organized training so that people are not bored and they get as much excitement and fun and um, experience and maybe also cool memories out of those training sessions as possible. And to end it all, let's hear from some people that actually ran through that and let's see what they think about it. The, the, the best part was drawing the map because it was like you had to draw it fast but with details so you wouldn't get lost and the first control I got lost a little bit uh, because just um, there were so many additional like um, paths that I didn't draw on my map that I didn't know where I am yeah so we had a plan with Sarah that we first will draw the roads that are surrounding our controls to have all the roads, well, like the necessary ones. And then we will draw, and then, then we will look to, on, every control, to every, on every control on the real map and we will uh, think what features we will maybe want to use uh, to navigate there. So we are like making a plan how to go to that control and uh, we are drawing these features who, that we will use. Quite some fun, something different. <laughs> how difficult was it to run on a map that you've drawn by yourself? Uh, not at all. Not at all? Say, yes. Is it because you know the forest so well? Yes, yes. It's, uh, I'm quite familiar with this forest so it wasn't difficult. It was even easier than I thought. I think I could draw a little bit less on the map yeah, and save some time over there. Yeah, so, so I noticed that there are people that were drawing the map for like 15 to 20 minutes. I think I would have done it like three to four maximum. 
I spent seven minutes. <laughs> seven minutes drawing map. Okay, still significant, yeah. Yeah. But how was the micro sprint? So, um, yeah, okay. I, I'm not going to spoil anything. Just tell us how how, how it was. Oh, the first part was really nice, uh, but later there was this um, how to say it um, dry forest with all these uh, branches. Uh -huh. I don't know. It was really scratchy on my neck. It, yeah. it wasn't nice. Was it was it difficult to run uh, without uh, flags on the controls? Uh, only sometimes. Almost everywhere I, I saw the control uh, immediately. I okay. have just two or three uh, places where I couldn't find it. I think that the map is a little bit old, so you have to think that if there is a yellow, there can be something and it can be bigger than it's on the map. How was the drawing part for you? Which part? Because the drawing part, because you, you don't know this forest. Yeah, so so you're, you're a good example of how can it feel for someone it was tough for me. Tough. And def definitely, definitely, ah, drawing part. Drawing part, yeah, the, the, the first one. Even to uh, harder than this part. <laughs> I don't have uh, good uh, drawing skills, <laughs> so it made uh, this, this this part even harder than for, for example, for Yulka. <laughs> but I, I, I enjoyed it. Which features did you focus on while drawing the map? Puffs, definitely puffs. Some water. For example, uh, swamps, dense part of uh, forest. So green areas. Yes, yes, some green areas.